Think you know Minecraft? Well, you don't. With the new 1.20 snapshots, there are a ton of new hidden features in both the code and in the game that you probably never heard of. So without further ado, here are 36 secret Minecraft things you didn't know about 1.20. Hard version. And if you do end up enjoying the video, then please do consider subscribing. I'm trying to get to 1.5 million subscribers before the end of the year, and if even 1% of the people watching this video subscribe, we'd get there in no time. So thank you so, so much if you do, and let's get right into it. Number one, you can actually now find diamonds using trail ruins. This will probably get patched soon, but for now, it's totally OP. Because of how the new structure was coded, all you have to do once you find a trail ruin is to go to the most northeast coordinate of the ruin, mine four more blocks to the east, and then just head down. Nine times out of ten, you will actually find diamonds. Super duper useful, just watch out for lava on your way down. Number two, if you reload the game enough times, there's actually a new hidden message to be found in the splash text for this update. Among random messages like, that's tough, and catch us in Tokyo, there's a third new splash text in the galactic alphabet. This message translates to don't sniff alone, a pretty cryptic and intriguing message. Does that mean we'll be getting another ancient mob soon, or am I just reading too far into it? Number three, speaking of new mobs, if you look through the texture files for the new sniffer mob, you'll actually see a hidden ravager head in the texture. This was because, according to Joppa, the ravager was used as a base model out of which the sniffer was molded, a neat little detail that you normally wouldn't notice at all. Number four, on the top Topic of hidden textures, this was an interesting one. If you spawn a villager with the biome cherry grove, you'll notice it has a really awesome and unique looking texture. Does that mean we'll be getting new villages too? Probably not, because nothing was ever done with the swamp and jungle guys, but hey, it's still pretty cool to have in the game. Number five, you've probably seen videos where people try to combine nether portals and it never works, but that's because they've been doing it wrong. If you head to the intersection of four chunks and build two nether portals right on the borders, you'll find a really strange bug pops out of it. Both nether portals actually generate correctly. I checked, and this wasn't present in versions before 1.19.3, so unless it's a new intentional feature, what's causing this bug is a mystery. Number six, this update also introduced functionality to a feature that I think lay dormant for far too long. Putting rabbit feet into a brewing stand finally produces a potion of luck. This is long overdue in my opinion, and I'm glad we now have this useless potion in survival. Number seven, speaking of luck, here's a really interesting fact that's been in the game for a while, but you might not have known about it. The biome you're in actually determines your luck when fishing. If you hop onto the Minecraft wiki, you'll see that certain biomes offer a higher treasure percentage when you go fishing. The highest of these is the Mesa biome, so the next time you want to catch some enchanted books, be sure to set up by the Badlands for the best odds. Number 8. As you might know, a new mechanic is that skulls placed on no blocks make the noise of that mob. What you might not know is the new death messages associated with them. If you get killed by a mob while wearing its specific head, you'll get the message, player was killed by by friendly fire. Strangely, this doesn't work with the Ender Dragon, but it works for all the other skull-based mobs in the game. Number 9. This is a perfect segue into the next fact, since currently in the game there is code for an item you might have thought about, the Illager Head. It already has code to make the Illager noise when placed on a note block, and judging by how recent it is, I expect we'll probably see it functional in the next few snapshots, which is super exciting. Number 10. The final new head fact is with the Player Head. Previously, this would make no noise if you placed it on a note block, but at the community's demand, Commands, this head plays the long forgotten oof sound when you right click the note block. Listen and enjoy. <laughs> Number 11, an interesting easter egg added in this snapshot is the movement of the spawn eggs for the Vex and Alay. Not only did these guys get retextured, so did their spawn egg. For whatever reason, the Alay spawn egg is a pixel higher than every other egg in the game, while the Vex spawn egg is a pixel lower. This hasn't been addressed by any Mojang employees yet, and it certainly is an odd feature. Number 12, typing this, or dinner bone backwards, into the recipe book changes your language to upside down English. A fun easter egg that connects to the mob dinner bone mechanic. Number 13, when you force crash the game, the game auto picks one of many crash report messages to show you. The new 1.20 snapshots brought in three new ones for players to find. The first is William couldn't ward away the bugs, a reference to the Secrets of Minecraft video where the warden was nicknamed William. The second and third easter eggs, Mobo again and Marilla.exe has stopped working, are both references to the official Minecraft series around the Minecraft world in 80 biomes, Mabo being the initial villain of the story and 
and Marilla being the computer protagonist. Number 14, bats are actually way more useful than you think. If present at a low enough light level, naturally spawned bats will actually hover towards the nearest mineshaft within 50 blocks. So if you see a bat flying around, don't kill it, maybe following it could lead you to a new notch apple. Number 15, there are also a couple of new advancements in this update that I'll sprinkle around the video. For one, collecting every single pottery shard in your inventory at once grants you the advancement Expert Ceramist, a cool addition to the archaeology feature. Number 16, in the same realm, having every flower in a pot grants you the achievement Expert Botanist. This does include the new torch flower and pitcher plant, giving them an awesome new use for all the advancements players. Number 17, the noise for the pots breaking is actually just a pitched down version of the turtle eggs breaking, a neat little connection that you might not have noticed if you didn't pay close enough attention. Number 18, if you take a look at the files for this update, you'll find something really interesting. Every tree variant in the game, with the exception of cherry, is now referred to with the prefix standing. Standing oak, standing birch, you get the picture. This is a really awesome find because it implies we'll be getting the new fallen log variants that appear in Bedrock Edition, a feature that I'm sure nobody would complain about. Number 19, on the topic of trees, there's a really subtle but really epic feature you might not have caught. Now when a goat rams a tree, it has a chance to drop an apple on the player. While it may not seem that practical, I'm sure that some tech players will have an absolute field day making farms with this one. Number 20, something interesting that I noticed is that copper oxidizes faster in different temperature biomes. In the overworld, copper in the desert oxidizes 20% faster than every other biome, but the rate actually becomes 50% faster in every single nether biome. That is, except the warped forest, which oxidizes as the same speed as the desert. This is a strange distinction and something that I guarantee you didn't know about. Number 21, instead of its boring old death messages, getting killed by the warden now has the chance to offer up some new variety. 33% of the time when killed by a warden, you'll get the death message, player has wandered too deep. A spooky and ominous new phrase that'll surely frighten any new players that happen to see it. Number 22, if you get the bad omen effect, wandering traders are actually 50% less likely to spawn around you. Similarly, any villager you walk past has the chance to begin sweating as if it was part of a raid. So if you want to assert dominance over the NPCs, I guess you can do that now. Number 23, you can now smelt netherite and diamond armor in a blast furnace. Smelting netherite gives you back a single scrap, which is a frankly atrocious deal. Diamonds are only mildly better, giving you a single diamond for whatever armor you throw into the fire. At first, this seems terrible, but it actually means that diamonds are finally farmable. Trading with an armorsmith can give you an infinite supply of diamonds using this trick. Number 24, another less game-breaking smelting mechanic is the ability to smelt amethyst into budding amethyst. And if you're looking for an alternative, they're also now craftable for 9 shards. This finally gives us the option to decorate with these blocks, as previously they were impossible to obtain. A nice little addition to building that we now have available. Number 25, by the same token, this update also gave us a long overdue feature I'm so glad we can now use. You can finally craft diorite, andesite, and granite into the new diorite, granite, and andesite bricks. These blocks look awesome and will definitely be game changers to building. Number 26, the final new advancement has to be my favorite. If you rename a pot to wig, you'll get the advancement Harry Potter. A terrible dad joke, but a cool advancement for sure. Number 27 to 29, the update also brought a ton of quality of life updates that I'll run through real quick. Placing sponges on a campfire is a new way to dry them. You can now find the new ancient seeds in the chests of ancient cities, hinting at a possible timeline lore connection that I'll definitely have to dig into. Get it? dig into. Finally, in the rapid fire round is that sniffer eggs will hatch faster if placed on moss, but slower if incubated over a campfire. The delay is roughly 30% slower, so make of that what you will. Number 30, on the topic of sniffers, if you rename a sniffer to Shervin, you'll find that it begins to glow, similar to the glowing or spectral arrow effect. This is a direct reference to the official Minecraft channel video where Vu Bui refers to the sniffer as Shervin. Number 31, placing tinted glass over a beacon now allows you to cut it off. If they have otherwise direct access to the sky, beacon beams can be sliced using the tinted glass block. This allows for some awesome laser beam designs and a bunch more things I'm sure you guys can think of. Number 32, ruined portals that generate in snowy biomes replace any lava with netherrack, as if it froze up. This is a neat mechanic that I had no idea about until I found it on the wiki. Number 33, skulk catalysts placed by the player will actually appear dimmer than those that naturally generate. This mimics the behavior of the shriek 
speaker that also dims and spins slower when placed by hand. Number 34, if you have a really good eye, you'll notice that frog lights in the creative inventory are not in alphabetical order. They look super random, but in fact, it is intentional. The order OVP is a reference to the Mojang developer Oleg Volgar Pozitsyn, and I'm completely sorry for mispronouncing that, the lead UI developer over at Mojang. Number 35, this update also brought back one of the best easter eggs in the game's history. Now, long overdue, Ravengers are once more scared of bunny rabbits. This cute and funny mechanic was reinstated with Jeb commenting that maybe this was more accurate to the lore than he had thought. As the original reason for the removal was that it didn't line up with the Ravagers lore, this change is very mysterious but very welcome. Number 36, if you were to rename the Warden to Gerard, your game would crash. Seems extreme? Well, that's because it is. In fact, every single fact in this video, with the exception of one, is completely made up for April Fool. So don't go mining under trail ruins in hopes of finding diamonds, because chances are you'll find nothing but lava. <clears throat> and as for the uh, elephant in the room, let's just pretend it's a big meta joke, right? You'd expect it to be on April 1st, but it's actually on April 2nd, so that makes it extra funny. If you want to watch 31 more facts that are definitely very, very real, click the video on the left. And if you want to play in a Minecraft trivia game show with real facts made just for you, the viewer, then click this video on the right. But thanks for watching, please do consider subscribing as it would mean the world to me, and peace out, have a good one, I'll see you next time.